This literally went almost up my nose. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Lasita. And I'm Hafsa. Hi. So let's start talking about the eligibility criteria. So the first thing is age. If you're an A-level student, you need to be between the age of 15 and 25. And if you're a recent graduate, you need to be below the age of 27 by the date of application. And also you need to have set uh, A-levels in three subjects, biology, chemistry, and physics. And it's two C's in biology, chemistry, and one D in physics, which you should have sat in one sitting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're not allowed to sit an exam multiple times throughout the two years of A levels. So you should have lived at least three years abroad, and your parents should be employed in the particular country where you're living in, with a foreign uh, with a income. foreign currency income, and. Um, also, so you have to have done your A-levels in an, uh, another country or more than three years of schooling, the last few years of schooling in another country to be eligible as a foreign student. Yeah. And also as of now, there are no interviews or any additional tasks that you need to do. So as long as you have the right grades and you uh, fulfill all the other eligibility criteria, then you're set to go and get admit admitted the KDU. Okay, so then moving on to uh, the application procedure. So we have to have like a set of files and documents uh, in order to uh, apply. So beginning off, we need to, so we start off with like a hundred dollar US dollar payment for your application procedure. And you need to have the deposit slip or like the transaction uh, receipt with along with your documents. Um, and there has to be an original copy of a letter from the bank stating the bank balance of the father, mother, or technically a guardian or whoever is paying on behalf of you for the degree. And they have to have evidence of employment in whatever country that you're coming from. So um, uh, a state statement from the company stating that this person has worked in this country for so and so years or is still working. And you should also, there's something called as a bona fide certificate that you can get from your school that also states that you have been uh, a pupil of that particular school for a certain amount of years or whatever year that you've been in the school for. Um, so basically they need to prove, you need to prove to them that you have been outside the country and you are eligible to come under the foreign category. Uh, Apart from that, you have to undergo medical test, uh, basic investigations, uh, and you have to be vaccinated, which is one point that they don't really mention anywhere. You have to be vaccinated, so hepatitis B and certain other vaccines. Um, so regarding the vaccinations, you can either do, if you know that you you want to study KDU, you can start that, like for example, the tuberculosis test. It, uh, there are three vaccines, so if you know that you want to come here, you can start taking those shots way in advance. Or otherwise, if you don't, it's still okay. You can do your first shot in your country and then do the other ones later on when you're studying during the first year. But mainly, you have to make sure that you're vaccinated for hepatitis B because you will start working with um, blood and cadavers and chopping and cutting and dissections and all of that. So you need to make sure you're vaccinated with hepatitis B. So additional documents that you need on while you're uh, applying with along with the rest of your application and application form is um, passport copies of your parents and yourself um, and recent bank statements they will want you to have them um, how much ever you can get that's better the more the better so yeah basically they want to see that you are able to pay for uh, the university fees not just for the first one or two years obviously if you're able to show that you have enough money to pay for good three to four years will be better mm -hmm. but as long as you show your parents income along with any uh, deposits that you might have in your bank or in your parents ba uh, parents banks then you can show that and it's a good way to reassure the university that you have the money to pay for the full five years of the course for those of you who have um, entry visas you need to go back you need to make sure that you're not here on a visit visa on the day on, on during the um, application procedure, as in like when you come here for your registration, you need to make sure that you are not on a visit visa because in case they ask you to show your visa and you have a visit visa, that might, that might be a problem. You were supposed to have an entry visa on your arrival during registration. So they wouldn't ask you to show 
your entry visa. But make sure you have it in and you don't come in with the visit visa for your registration. So if you're a dual citizen, then you don't need to have a visa. Or if you have a student passport, obviously you don't need one. So for those of you who are living in the Middle Eastern, for instance, you obviously don't need a visa and you don't need to be a dual citizen, uh, citizen in order to apply to KDU. As long as you have lived abroad for three, uh, minimum three years and you've done your school in that during those years, it's enough to be recognized as a uh, foreign, yeah, as a foreign student. So course fee, <laughs> um, right, so for our course fee, we pay in installments, but our installments is a year per year. That's our installment, so we pay 12,500 US dollars per year. We don't pay semester wise like in other countries. We pay for the whole year. Uh, so at the end of the year, we pay in advance for the next year. Yeah, so technically, when you start the first year, you should have you should pay the full 12,500 during the first one or two months of the, mm -hmm. that particular year. And then for the second year, you'll start to pay in November. So every single November, towards the end of that year, you'll be paying for the next year. 12,500 is just the course fee, it's just a degree. This, is, this does not include, if you're planning on taking hostel um, accommodations, this does not include that. And none of the other expenses about, um, none of the other miscellaneous costs. No, your uniform, your library fees, your books, nothing comes under this, it's just the degree. That's for $12,500. Um, and initially, you would be asked to pay the $12,500 for the first year during your registration, maybe a day or two before they call you to the university for your registration, uh, or maybe a day or two after. So you have that buffer period of uh, around a week before or after registration where you'll have to pay for the year that you start. Okay, so let's talk about uniforms now. Now, when it comes to uniforms, there are recommended places by the university where you have to go, meet the tailor, get, get your basic uh, sizes yeah so Even they would they will stuff. do custom measurements uh, yeah. and stitch it up for you yeah and that depending obviously on how many uniforms you want to get the price also obviously varies but i would say if you're going to get one single uniform uh, with the belt and shoes and everything that comes with it you'll be spending about ten thousand rupees uh, okay so some basic uh, requirements when it comes to appearance in uniform. So when it comes to guys, you want to make sure that your hair is short, you can have long hair, you can have a beard, but you can have a moustache if you want. They're very particular on the shoes, so you will figure it out when you, when you get here. There are certain shoes that uh, formal shoes with laces which they are very particular about. Yeah. Um, you can be wearing different designs of shoes, so if there's one particular style of shoes that you have to go for. Can you tell me something about girls? Um, famous. So essentially in the first two years, we male and female men, we both have the same uh, uniform. But it's, it's an option to you, you can either wear a long, you can stitch it custom made, you can stitch a long sleeve shirt if you would like to. Um, it's essentially the same shirt and pant, and the shoes also, it's just female shoes, but same laces and tights. Um, hair, yes, they're very particular. Your hair should be slicked back, probably a ponytail, uh, a braid. Can you make make <laughs> makeup? Um, honestly, it doesn't really matter unless you're full flashed with ten layers. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, but it's university. A little bit is always allowed. But yeah, they're very particular on that. In your nails also. Yeah, they're particular about nail polish and uh, multiple piercings. I think our friend had like encountered yeah. stuff with multiple piercings. Um, so these, these, these things, they don't really mention in the handbook. But yeah, you can't have like multiple piercings. Um, hair color also. Yeah. You can dye your hair. It has to be your natural color. So, I mean, it goes with the name. It's a military university. It's a defense university. So they have to maintain the decorum and the discipline, which is why they have certain restrictions towards these kind of activities. Okay, so just to finish off, I just want to say a few words regarding the course structure of uh, our degree here at KDU. So it's five years long, and the first two years are known as the preclinical years, where you'll be studying anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, and then anatomy breaks down into further subjects. 
and then we followed those two years are followed by two years of paraclinical um, sciences where we study six subjects microbiology parasitology uh, pharmacology uh, public health forensic medicine and pathology and then after that you get one year of clinicals where you'll be doing five subjects uh, medicine surgery pediatrics obzingani and psychiatry the thing about this last year is that we start from third year onwards. So the last three years are going to be heavily focused on paraclinicals as well as clinicals. Clinicals is uh, just because we'll be attending appointments throughout different government hospitals in Colombo or around Colombo. But we'll also be having lectures on these five clinical subjects. So point that we have to remember is that our paraclinical subjects and our clinical subjects uh, will be happening simultaneously. So we'll have our appointments and then we also have paraclinical subjects to maintain. <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> okay. Um, so we, the last three years would be, uh, we have clinicals all throughout the years and we have to work through both paraclinical and clinical. And the rest is the information about how long each appointment would be, how long each semester would be, or how long each subject is, how, how many semesters a subject extends to. It's all there in the handbook, which probably will have a link where you can access the handbook too. We'll leave a link down in the description for that. Okay, so with that said... Uh, Finish? In, yeah. In, in. This is how you get into KDU as a international student. Or a foreign student. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye for now.